today at um, university, external university. So welcome here. My name is Sandra Castro. I am a master in political communication from the external university also. I am the leader of Tan Grande y Jugando, which is a community that in, foments the video game developer industry in my country. How would you translate Tan Grande y Jugando? I usually like think about it like grown up and playing, but maybe you came up with a better idea. Maybe it's too old and playing. What do you think about that? I would also like to know which ones are your favorite games? Like uh, I'm also a gamer, of course. I like Horizon Zero Dawn. I love Okami. I love also uh, mobile games like World War II, that it is also a video game that was made here in Colombia. I would also like to know what, which are your favorite games. So let us know. I want to know who's here. While you're sharing your answers, I'm going to keep on uh, my presentation, like what are we going to see today and what are we going to enjoy this evening. As I told you, I'm the leader of Tan Grande Jugando, which is a video game development community that works for the, like the getting strong with the, with the video game, with the industry of my country. We are the host of one of the most important jams in Colombia, which is the Women Game Jam. It's a jam that we recommend that women be part of them so they can be a part of the video game community. And so these girls are going to enjoy um, the industry and be part of that because the problem that we see is in that the women doesn't have the abilities to be part of the video game community is that they don't want to be at all there. So why is that? And that's something to to be more about the the cultural environment than the industry itself. So here we already see your your answers. Tetris is one of my favorites too. Age of Empires is pretty awesome. I played a bit of everything, but Pokemon is my favorite. Which Pokemon is your favorite? Like the Pokemon on your mobile, Pokemon Go, or is the new Pokemon on the Switch? Luis says that Call of Duty and The Last of Us. Oof, I love The Last of Us, and I'm so waiting the next uh, coming of The Last of Us. I don't play video game, but I'm interested. Okay, Mark, you're going to be even more interested after this presentation. Uh, Isabel remember as Pac-Man, which the version of the PlayStation Pac-Man that was released uh, a month ago, like the free version, is pretty awesome though. Pokemon Go. Yeah, thank you, Luis, for, for telling us now. You still love Pac-Man, but we don't know what you love now, Maite. Also, Cynthia says table games. Wow, pretty awesome. Which table games are your favorite? Mine is Rumi Cube. I love Paceman too, like maybe it's uh, Pac-Man too, a long time ago. Crash and Mario Bros. Pac-Man and Bomberman, oh, Bomberman. I love it. Age of Empires, Go and Sword and Shoot, no, okay. Uh, okay, so what we're going to have today, oh my God, sorry for, yeah, I'm, I'm here. As I was telling you, like Tan Grande Jugando is in a lot of uh, places and we want that everyone know everything about the video game industry of Colombia. So we host this jam that is especially for women. So they came part of the um, like federation of video games, like the industry in our country. We also are the creators of the Liga Indie, which is like the indie league of video games. So you can choose between those video games and make like a party couch a competition there. We were also on Campus Party, as you can see this picture in yellow and, and pink is when we were part of the, the event. We're going to be part of the event this year too. 
if you remind me after this presentation, I will tell you a little bit more about what's going to happen with Campus Party. And also because of my work in the video game industry, I was part also at Colombia 4.0, which is like the biggest um, or the most important event of uh, orange economy in, in a creative economy, economy in our country. Pretty awesome event. If you have an event being on one, you should go. So, why should we talk about video games? Like, wh why is it important that we take this conversation like really, really serious? So, first of all, in Colombia or in Latin America, Colombia is the fourth consumer of the video games industry. Like, we ate a lot of video games. We have the potential. And this is this is uh, a statistics of legal games, you know, like like we we need to to think about like legal games happening here in the in the survey of New Zoo. We also in our country have a national development plan that includes the Crea Digital, which is a, a program to improve the the creative economy of our country. And also we have two important actors that we recognize as the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Technologies, which are uh, incredible parts of PC industry, of course, because video games is like art and you have also like this powerful part of technology and you have also the part of narration and story and a lot of things that you can talk about video games and let's just remember that one video game is going to be it, it has the exact replica of an important building that was burned down a few years ago do you remember which building i'm talking or do you know what which building i'm talking about right now Notre Dame, yeah, Paula, point for you. And which is the video game there? The video game there is Assassin's Creed. Like it is so well done. It is a work, a masterpiece of work that we're going to reconstruct a church, a really important church for our history of humankind with a video game. It's so epic. I love video games a lot. So for all of you, like uh, I, I, well, I, I need to, if I need to convince you why we should keep talking about this conversation about video games. This is uh, a news from uh, Spain. The video game industry uh, makes more money than movies and music in Spain. Like it is a really, really big movie and a big industry and also we have to think about the other possibilities about video games like education this moment in the pandemic moment that we are living in the quarantine like how are you living this type of of thinking and learning and all the time like discussing a lot of t of information but you feel tired and you don't feel like you're learning like how what we can connect education with game tools to make it better. And of course, VR and AR are going to be something like in our uh, next future, it's going to be a, a more, much bigger and even more powerful in education tools. Also, it's an industry that doesn't directly make waste because, well, we already have these kind of tools like the video game industry is not not like it's going to damage your computer and uh, maybe you're going to damage your computer when you have a rage attack when you're failing in your age of empire game i don't know but the truth is that we don't directly generate waste and also you have to think from our country and in like all the talent that you can have in the video gaming industry it's not just 
uh, engineers and designers or animators or the musicians. Here we have the case of Maria Lisa Navarro Morales. Did you know Maria Lisa Navarro Morales? She's from Colombia too. No? If you don't have an idea, don't worry about that. Like, Maria Lisa is an architect from Universidad de los Andes, and she's a historic architect. She worked in Assassin's Creed Unit 2. We have a Colombian working on that, and it is not a game developer. Like, of course, we can be part of the video game industry and think about what we can accomplish with this. So, well, we're now going to be into the topic of this project and, and to think about more about like video game industry in Latin America. What do you think this flag is? Do you recognize this flag? It looks like what? But what do you think it looks like? Like, okay, uh, Maite said South America. Yes, it's South America. And what it is about? Nothing else, don't worry. What I want to ask in my investigation was about the video game industry in Latin America. And I need that an organization that like why sh or how should I choose those countries that I'm going to work in like, the reason and I find the best reason ever the Federation of Video Games of Latin America this is an organization that is part of an, an entire ecosystem of the industry the video game industry and all of the countries that you see here are part of the video game developing industry, the Federation of Latin America. It, there are already more, like a lot of more video game industry developers there, but what I want to know was these special cases because I was investigating with actors that I could speak of, I would speak with. Like, actors in Mexico, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, and of course, Colombia. And in that methodology, I was making like a lot of uh, open questions about the game industry and to see if I can like compare it to the other video game industry in the Latin America ecosystem. And, and I could do that in my investigation, but we're going to see that later. So where are we going to see in the state of the art of the investigation of how are the video game addressed in Colombia and Latin America. What, how do you think that, that those are the investigations that we usually receive? I love the idea of Mark Duffy that says that the uh, Federation logo is like a Latin American ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Maybe that's the reason they choose. Which are the investigations or the papers that you believe that we could find about the video game developer industry? Well, when I was making my investigation, a lot of the documents that came apart were like, these video games are really awesome to study. This is a uh, uh, epic video game to, to understand the marketing, um, publishing, and, and maybe in some of them what was a little bit of a cultural environment of the video game but I didn't find anything about the industry per se. Like what is happening there? How, do, how is it growing? How old is it? And 
of course, after all my investigation, I came across this gorgeous case. I know that you're going to think like, why are we talking about Venezuela if Venezuela is, wasn't in the conversation at all? Like, why Venezuela? Well, we know that Venezuela has a humanitarian crisis. We know that they have the coercion of freedom to expression. But it also gave me the idea to think about Venezuela because it all started with Venezuela. The, the thing that I wanted to make my investigation was because of this case. And sometimes you make in these questions when you find something that you don't like at all, like why this happened and how we can prevent that this happen again. And the case is uh, the law of terror. I call it the law of terror, but the name of the law is law for the provision of war video games and war toys. Like it's a really uh, boring name, but it is what it is. Like it is a prohibition law for video games of war and toy war games. Like so. What, what, why is this case so important and why is this game? Have you played Mercenaries 2, Whirling Planes? Well, I'm sorry <laughs> if you are watching this and you're planning to play this game because I'm going to make a little spoil here. Well, this game is like of, I don't know, like 2007, maybe. It's really old, so you already should play this game <laughs> if you haven't. It's pretty awesome. So what happened here is that um, this bounty hunter was um, asked to be part of an investigation in a, in a Latin America country where they have a communist and socialist leader. Do you recognize that type of info? Yeah. And he had to kill that leader. So if you don't want to have a spoil, like you can uh, mute me here. And when I change my, my next page, you're going to unmute me and you'll hear the next part and you won't be spoiled at all. So spoiler alert. Well, if you keep playing this game, you will find that the mercenary change from, from like team. Like, he sees that the leader isn't the bad guy he used to be. And what happened is that he finally be, became part of the other team. But the legislators of this law never played the game. They clearly never did. They just see the trailer and said like, yeah, this is about Venezuela. So <laughs> these guys just saw this video game and make a stupid decision and make this law and this law is something that is really hurtful for the video game development community there since then like they were already thinking about passing to 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 bogota they were at caracas and they want to change the vision games is a developer a studio that was born in caracas venezuela and when this happened they were like we need to leave now, like, because if you were making like a video game, like you have to shoot something, but it, it, and it shouldn't be like a violent content that you just have to shoot something. You were going to go to jail. So it was a really, something that was really hurtful for the industry at that time. And what really happened is that this law never was at all because if you make stupid decisions if you make a law that it doesn't seem to be part of something that you really need to work out it won't work you won't use it at all and what happened well i had you this case leonardo quintero may of 2017 i told you before that the um, that the law was uh, the prohibition law. Yeah, like the law, the name of the law is the law for the prohibition of war video games and war toys. And this case 
Leonardo Quintero developed a mobile game from the Google Play Store and in which you shoot two uh, socialist um, soldiers. Like, yeah, and that, that was the game. Of course, it was really violent. Of course, it was something that it had guns. But this law that I just mentioned you never passed over here. When they capture this guy, they make him erase the video game. And if he erased the video game, they will release him. And they did, they released him. But the truth is that, that this was the type of video game that was supposed to be part of this law and it never happened. Like, of course it didn't happen. But what I want to tell you about, like just not about like the absurd story of, of the uh, Venezuela government, it's also like a story about the awesome people that can be there for you. And we have now this story. Venezuela crisis jam. Well, these Venezuelans knew about the law, knew about the crisis of their country, and they wanted to do something more for their community. So when Leonardo Quintero was arrested, they created this jam. A jam is a, a hackathon, like a hackathon where you, in a period, an amount of time, you're going to be developing a video game uh, for a short time. So you make a video game. It is uh, like bigger ideas have been uh, born in jams, but we're going to talk about jams later. But what they did was to put the social situation of Venezuela in the public eye in video game. Um, and that's something that's pretty awesome. So to think about Venezuela today, of course they're having the same problems, but they have the power of the community. And we can see it in this post, which is like um, a survey, yes or no, what, what, what are you going to choose? And they're telling here like, this year, the Caracas Game Jam, Caracas Game Jam is a jam that it's made in the Global Game Jam. Uh, the Global Game Jam is the biggest jam. Uh, we call it also like the, like the new year for the game developers because it is a big celebration. It's, it is celebrated in 100 countries all over the world. So we're telling here that they, the office that usually make the jam uh, change. So they, doesn't have, they don't have air conditioner and also they don't have showers. And this jam, it's about 48 hours. So are you going to be there or not? It is a really hard question. And Caracas is like 40 degrees, really hot. But we're going to start with our awesome countries and the other stories that I wanna tell you. The first of all is Mexico. They, they have like um, a really spectacular place, which is like if you have, um, I don't remember the name of the Museum of, of Science here in Bogota. Do you remember? It has also, yeah, Maloca. Claudia, you're the best. Maloca had a kid with Techno park, something like that, like like uh, informatic place, something like that. And they have a kit between them. And in that kit is El Centro de Cultura Digital. I promise you that. This place is where you go to to have fun with your friends. Also, like they have these walks uh, one Sunday every month. Well, not in quarantine, but. One Sunday every month, they go to have fun to, with Pokemon Go. Like you're going to find a lot of fans there. They, they aren't scared of being called fanboy. Like, yes, we are fanboys and I love it so much. They also have these events where they promote the video game development 
community there like do you want to create your video game do you want to uh, be part of this industry do you want to i don't know like are you having problems to making this mechanic work or this art or music or etc and they also help the Me mexican community acknowledge the video game community the video game development community of their country like that's pretty awesome and this is an institution from the government a big awesome for two they also have uh, big communities there the academy is there you have also uh, collective groups there and of course you have the biggest event of video game developers from latin america which is the devourer it's a really big event of for video game developers or oh, developers game developers not video game developers which is pretty awesome but what i love the most about the the video game developer community there and how they are used to the pop culture is how they address to the like the investigations that you're going to make about for your university like this this is a phrase that i love a lot like he is brooms away alias batman millionaire philanthropist and playboy but you're not batman you need to end the school you can make your thesis and your social service here at the finisterra which is this uh, like idea lab to make your your work papers go on and of course it would be awesome if you in your professions make a little bit of investigation about the video game community because this industry needs a lot of all the industries and of course you are part of this they make there are so big that they have the biggest location for the global game jam i was telling you well not the biggest of the world the biggest of the hispanomeric location which was 600 participants like that's a lot and and what i love the most about that is that you have uh, the public entity like government there you have educational entities like universities you have also collectives and video game developed communities which is what we need and you also have the video game development studios the professionals that already have passed for, for the industry there they're going to the jam to know these developments to know these people where were they working on and how they're making the solutions of, of the game of course it's a great event to uh, pick up some talent for your company of course it is but but it is so awesome and you know what this event in mexico doesn't cost at all it doesn't cost you can be part of that event go there don't know anything about video game development industry don't know how to develop your own video game maybe you're going to make a board game too and go there and be part of of the jam that it is pretty pretty awesome now we go with Argentina. Did you know that Argentina is a, a principal producer of video games in Latin America? They have the biggest industry of Latin America, but what it is like, what they make the biggest industry is how they work with their community. If you see this picture, well, the picture is in at that side. If you see that picture, it's a picture with the president of Argentina, Mauricio Macri. I'm not asking you if you are, well, if you think about his policy is good or not, but just think on the picture. The video game development representatives are in the pink house of Argentina. That's a pretty big step and for given that step it means that you have to be really organized argentina has this awesome project and you have to google it now if you can think about that it is juegosargentinos.org and it is an awesome web page when you can find the video game developments made in their own country 
is awesome. And they have inside like a lot of organizations that are working to improve this video game industry and to be acknowledged by their own Argentinians. They have Fundaf, that it is like the foundation for the video game development in Argentina. And they work in the biggest event, which is a private. It is like the Colombia 4.0, but just about video games. It is uh, EVA, a video game exposition of Argentina video games. No, Argentina video game exposition. Yeah, should be like that. Uh, and well, that event it is a private event. Like when I say private event, it's not like you couldn't go there. Like you can buy your ticket. Like that that means that it's private. But what what it means is like you can have sponsors. Colombia Cuatro Punto Cero can't have the sponsors because it is a public event. But in this type of events, you can have sponsors there. And uh, that may that means that you're going to be in touch with big companies of video game development that are interested on in being part of this event. And also, they have this. This is ah, something that means that you're making video games for the people that aren't usually the part of the video game industry, the accessibility seal, which is pretty awesome because you're thinking about the industry that you're developing even bigger. I love it. Uruguay has inside the Plan Seibal. Plan Seibal is a, a public policy that is really old, but it worked with one idea, and it is that one kit, one computer. All the kids have to be with the technology uh, with them. Like it's something like like it is your computer it's for you it's something that you're going to need to learn and the thing is that the specification of the software they use is as um it's different like from windows or ios so they need to develop their own applications for these computers do you think like no this is not this isn't so funny at all because you're going to need more money to buy those applications but it also means that you're giving uh, your own money to your own companies to improve the, the development of the community, to the development of the industry. So these companies of video games usually are like making um, a step inside the software development industry and the video game development industry. So when they have like a strong step in one industry, they can pay to the other industry. So, oh, sorry, my doggy. No. Sorry, my doggy is really happy to see me here. So when when they have these um, this type of business, uh, maybe I showed you later how is how is my doggy here. Um, when when you give this industry, like that type of security, of economical, economical security, they can make the video games to other platforms. So it's going to be uh, pretty awesome. They only have 20 companies, but there are really strong companies. And they have the Game Lab, which is a international summit of video game development. And it is, uh, event that is usually made in Spain. And this is the only Latin American country that has that event, like pretty awesome. Chile, uh, in their own part, they make the video game development association with the biggest developers and the youngest developers, like the Veterano and the Young, and El Pelao. What they want is like to make a really big organization that they can break that um, like awful steps that they usually do in the video game development industry. And this is a picture that was the delegation of the video game in the game developers conference in 2017. And it is a really big delegation from the Latin American community. They're 
uh, growing up a lot. And you can see here Maureen Berho, which is the woman in the, well, they all have like black shirts, uh, but she's standing with the glasses. Maureen Berho is uh, also, uh, she's not a game developer per se, like she is a socialist, but they're making their card video games, which is a pretty awesome video game too, that you should say it. It is called uh, Niebla Games, the company, and the game is Causa pretty awesome card game, virtual card game. Buenísimo. So what, what Chile has, like in comparison of Colombia, it's also about like the Crea Digital. When they make that competition, they didn't think about like, this game is educational or is not? No, <laughs> they think about this game is going to give you money because it's fun. Yes, okay, I'm going to give you money. Like that, that's something, a really big step for the government. And I am like making the, like this declaration like too easy, but it is like a, uh, the fastest way to explain you what happened. And so these companies that are promoted by the government are getting even stronger and making connections with other countries and other publishers to be part of the video game development industry and make Chile even, even bigger. So, what's happening now in Colombia? What do you think that we're going to find in Colombia? Of course. Well, Paula Monastoque says that it is a new industry. What, what else do you say? Philippe says some independent studios. Well, the truth is that Colombia has 16 years of video game development. It's one of the oldest of Latin America. Argentina has like 20 years, like, and Colombia has 16, so that's a lot. We have a lot of community and actors. Of course, we have um, public and private entities. We also have uh, the academy, the university is there. We should put here external, of course, <laughs> like, like, so now, what are you doing to the video game development community? You have to work on that. And of course, we have a um, gorgeous community like Tan Grande y Jugando, which is the best community of video game developers ever, of course. You're going to be fans of community of Tan Grande y Jugando. We have also like these uh, special places like Tecno Parque, for, and which is from Sena. And we have like other actors that aren't here, but they keep growing. And of course, a lot of more of universities that are interested on the video game developer industry. But what we have here, and uh, what, what I was telling you before about the, the Latin America Federation was that we are part of the Latin America Federation through Colombia Video Game um, Association, which is uh, COBA. They make the release of their organization in Colombia 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, <laughs> of 2018, which it was a pretty awesome Colombia 4.0. Uh, we have like the panels of investigation, we have also a showcase of video games, and we have also a meet to match uh, meetings. Meet to match is like when you go to meet with someone, and like, hmm, it, it is a, a strong word, but it is like um, like Tinder, but for companies. But that's a meet to match. Like, yeah, I want to see you. <laughs> that's a meet to match, and. Uh, the the sad story about this part is that this didn't happen again in the last Colombia 4.0. The reason was because we split the Colombia 4.0 into four. 
So the resources we had for this event is now split in four. That's something that is really hard. So Paula Monte said, it has not been on the market for a long time and not much is known. Well, 16 years is a lot. And the truth is that Colombian video games are more appreciated outside of Colombia than in Colombia. That's the true story. So let's keep on with our sweet story. I want to share you about uh, this um, like project that, that is happening in Barranquilla because it's something that I am I am like really happy that this is happening there. So what happened is that the local government, la gobernación, it is uh, pushing the video game industry to make it better. And they make a video game event like the, like the Colombia 4.0, but just for video games, like nothing else, just video games. And it is the Atlantic of Video Game Summit, which is an um, event that just, it's just about two days. It was supposed to be this month, but as you can see, <laughs> we are on the quarantine. So they didn't this, this event but there are happening things inside and i want you to look at this picture this picture of three guys we have uh, the one with the white shirt and a yellow strip is a game development guy from a video game development industry of barranquilla the second guy with the white shirt and the logo of atlantico atlantic connect i know atlantico leader is uh, the Secretario TIC. It is the government part. And the one with the pink shirt is the Academy, is the Universidad del Norte de Barranquilla. This picture is awesome because you see three different actors working from the same, for the same purpose. And we need to do that in all Colombia. So how do you, how many students do you think that are in Colombia. How many do you think that are in Colombia? Wow, Juan Pablo González, 100. Okay. Paula Monastoque says 10. Lorena Valderrama says one or two. Adriana, two. Sebastián Morales, no idea. What do you think about that? Well, the truth is that when I closed my investigation, uh, Alejandro Sorio said, I think not many students, maybe five. Five? Okay. When I closed my investigation, I get to an uh, awesome conclusion. And they always agree with me. Help. And the, this conclusion is that we don't really know our industry and we need to know it more. Because when I find this investigation, they were 72. 72? Like a lot a lot of companies making video games in Colombia. That's a lot. And where are they? What are they doing? How are they working on? They make a lot of software, but they make a lot of gamification. And I don't know if you know, but we have awesome video games made for Disney, for Nickelodeon, for Cartoon Network. Awesome video games that are now a uh, like the best um, weighted on the 2020, like his crystals. If you haven't seen that um, video game, you need to look for this crystals. It is awesome. Oh, I love Philip uh, says and remembers Mr. Alpaca has some good games. They were also the winner of the last year of the indie game uh, league 
the indie league like I was told you before. So would you like to develop a video game? Would you like to develop a video game? Are you sure? Well, the first experience that I would recommend to you is this one, a game jam. A game jam is something that you experience in a little bit more of 24 hours or 48 hours. Maybe the, the shortest game jam I've been is eight hours. And it was because it was a board game jam. But in this game jam, some people didn't have experience about making video games. They have many tools or they have knowledge about some tools, but they didn't have anything else. And they came part of, of this awesome experience, which is uh, like, being in a sleepover with your friends. Well, pretty awesome. And they also play. Uh, you also create those ideas and you also like make awesome stories about there. And of course, like the story that I want to tell you now is like, oh, I want to inspire you more, in inspire you. And this is the story behind a 48 hour sleepover from the woman game jam. As I was told you before, the woman game jam is a event just for women. But you're seeing these pictures and you say like, hey, but those are really here, hairy women. Like what's happening there? And of course, they're not hairy women. The thing is that the this, this event is to make the woman like, what, what we need is like to empower these women to make video games. And what they're working on, these guys are working on, is to improve them, to make them feel better, empower them to make video games. So these girls were the only ones that were developing and the male that were there and also some of the females were the mentors of the event. And they make that this sleepover was something that was really cool for them. And that was something, a really awesome experience. So in the next time we had an event, we were going to know, we, we will know that they were, these women were going to this event because they weren't afraid to be part of these spaces that they share with other men. Because when we invite them, invite him, invite them, we tell them that it was an event just for them. And that was true, that those were the only developers that can be. But the men that were there that were really awesome with them and helped them to become a better developers in this jam. So we're going to have this jam. I'm going to talk to you about that later. In the quarantine, We've been making these game jams also, like in 48 hours, we make a video game. Uh, we have a 100 jam, 100 hours jam, that it was the stay at home game jam, which is a jam that we uh, made an article for El Tiempo also. Like now the mass media is also looking on the work that San Grande is making and like, hey, what are you doing there? Like, we want to see more video game developers in, in our country, like what are you working on? And this other the game jam uh, that doesn't have a name, it is about the uh, advert game jam, which is to um, foment the community and the economical companies in this moment. Like uh, if you need like advert games for your company, like it, it was a pretty awesome jam to make business. It was for that. And well, now let's talk about the next woman game jam. It's going to be um, virtual. We're going to have it from the 21st to the 30th of August. And it's going to be also completely virtual. And we already have 25 women the first time. We hope to 
half this time, like three times more. I hope so. And it is also going to be just for female to be the developers, but we're going to have activities open for everyone. So, and that's the activities that we have all the time in Tangrande Jugando. We have activities so you can enjoy everything about the video game developers community. And if you want to make more about uh, video games or know about more, you know, you can be part of this community. So we talked today about the Latin America Federation. We talk about how horrible can be the politics if you don't take the game seriously. But also we see opportunity cases and we know a little bit more about the video game developer community in Colombia. So let me know if you have more questions about this topic. If you like my presentation, you can also address me. Like Tangrande is in everywhere. If you just type Tangrande Juganda, you're going to find us really quickly. Do you have any questions? Ah, well, Isabel is remembering me that I make a promise and was about campus party. So, the first of all, I want to tell you that uh, Tangrande is working to be part of all these places to empower the video game industry. So, in that um, idea, we are trying to be part of all the events of technology that we can and that, that have some alignment with the topic that we are touching today, that is the video game development industry. So for that, we are going to be part of Campus Party, which is going to be for uh, a, a digital event. It's going to be simultaneously in 32 countries at the same time. It's pretty awesome though. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, this event is also um, going to have a strong part of the indie video game development community, so we can show more about the video game industry. And uh, of course, it's going to be on July. I don't remember the date well, but it's going to be July, the, the first two weeks of July, but just three days. Uh, Philip has asked, what will happen to the future of Colombia video games? Well, if you ask me on this moment, like, I'm, I'm really scared for the video game development community in all the world, because we're having like this really hard time for all the industries. And the truth is that it is hard for everyone in this moment. And the video game development community is also having a hard time. So what I'm thinking about is that maybe it is an opportunity because uh, costs in Colombia are really cheap. So making video games in Colombia is really cheap and that would help us to make um, something about like uh, biggest improvements for, for our industry and maybe other big studios like happened with Jam City. Jam City bought a company, of, a Colombian company and is now in Colombia, uh, we're going to have more cases like that because it is really cheap to make video games in Colombia versus the United States or Europe. So we can have that uh, idea of having, like we have to be careful of the steps, but maybe it's going to be even better, but we need that our president make <laughs> better decisions with the orange economy that he has in his pocket. Diego asks, what are the big challenges now for developing industry in Colombia? Well, the first of all is that maybe they don't find the talent they need. We have the talent, like Colombia is really talented. We are really epic about that. I want to know why Diego's answers or questions aren't being part of the 
I don't know. I'm, I'm like I'm reading the questions from Diego in another from another one. So Diego, what happened? Are you blocked? So the the I was thinking about the challenges now from the development industry, and it is like we need to be really strong about what we are going to work now. Like um, we're having the this problem. And it is not a problem that is just for Colombia. I just read a report that in Europe, they're thinking that the 17% of the industry is going to die of the video game development industry of the Indies. That's something that's really hard. And we need to keep strong on that. And what we need more is that the Colombian Indos are we, uh, the people that it is in this chat at, at the same time, uh, think about like what we can do for our industry. And maybe you have just one dollar to, to have it in games. Why not put that dollar in an awesome video game made in your country? That would help a lot of the video game industry in your country. Okay, so as it says, exactly, I think the opposite. This is the moment for the video games. It can be a great opportunity. It is a great opportunity if you have like your game that it's already out there. But if you're developing your game, like I've been talking a lot uh, with a lot of types of different offices, not, not just game development, the game developers. And this moment is like everything is slowing down for a lot of reasons. If you're a game developer, it is slowing down for the shops, for the stores, like PlayStation isn't doing the QA testing that they're supposed to be doing because pandemic. <laughs> Like, they're not going to make that thing. So if your game was already on the store, it's a pretty epic win. But if it wasn't, like maybe it's going to be a little bit more delay. How can we stop no national talent leaving for the other countries? Well, the thing is that, Diego, we need to promote the conception of the national video games. If we promote the conception of the national video games, we're going to um, help this talent be part of the Colombian video games. And the thing also that we have to think about that is that these game developers can came back. They also give back knowledge to the Colombian video game developers. So, part of us we need to have them there to op opportunities and also part of us we would like we would like that they were part of here just here and nothing else what is the role of the video game industry in colombia economy like in the pb we're like nothing in this moment but we can be a really great part because as i was telling you before uh Video games generate more money than uh, movies and, and music together. And in Colombia, we spend a lot of money in music and, vi and, and movies, like just, just producing it. I'm not, I'm not telling like consuming, like just producing, we spend a lot of money making movies. But if you could make that like, um, like a multi-platform, experience like you have uh, this um, series like a netflix series that just came up like it, it is like distrito salvaje which is a pretty epic series made in colombia if you haven't seen it you should and think about like you have distrito salvaje and then you have the game of distrito salvaje like what is going to happen there we're going to make a big bomb of money if we make that uh, so we need to make like those improvements in our uh, orange economy. They have to write to all panelists and attends. Okay, what? There is a tab for Q and A different from this chat. What? 
Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll come in just now and uh, say hello to everyone. Um, yeah, so so uh, Diego is sending uh, messages. There's a separate uh, Q and A tab. Uh, if you look on the bottom of the screen, Sandra, oh. you can see uh, a thing that says uh, preguntas y respuestas or uh, questions and answers or. Ah, oh, I see. No, just I just had one panel. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, I'll I'll just read Diego's question here, okay. where he asks, uh, "What's your favorite Colombian video game? Could you recommend some to play?" Yeah, that's an awesome idea, and I'm going to show you this. Well, this is just a thing made in, and this is made in in Bucaramanga. This game name is Crystals, like Cristales in Spanish. And it is so awesome. You can find the beta of this game in your in in a store for your computer. If you have a Mac, that you're going to suffer because there is no version for Mac. But if you have a Windows, you can play this game and like enjoy it a lot. Also, if you're like um, making Maybe you like platforms. Maybe you you don't like RPG games. You can also play this game, which is a video game uh, game made by Orlando, which is a um, solitary developer. Like he just himself is making this video game. So it's pretty epic. It is free, and you can enjoy it. And it, it is going to be free from a short time because he's already looking for a publisher so this is like the like the alpha to play and to enjoy so you should be part of the his testing for example which is another form to to uh, support video game developers in your country and how about mobile games sandra what uh, what mobile game would you recommend Oh, in Colombian video games, I have two video games like I love a lot. The first one is this one, which is called uh, World, War, World War II, which is from uh, Jam City. I told you, this is the company that uh, bought a studio here in Bogota, which is pretty awesome. And it is a MOBA, pretty, pretty epic. And the other one, Maybe I just delete it because I already passed it. I oh, know it's Echo. Echo with double K, which is from Matrix. And it is a video game with AR. And augmented reality is pretty awesome. Uh, it, it is too shy, but th this is the name of the game. It's something that you buy from, from the store and you can find it for Google and you can find it also for, for iOS. Okay, well, I think that's, uh, that's wonderful. I think we're, we're about out of time today, but uh, thank you very much, Sandra, for uh, sharing your knowledge with us today. It's been uh, really interesting to find out about all these uh, different aspects of Latin American video game production. And uh, thank you everyone as well for uh, coming and participating today. Um, we'll be sending the, the video and the slides um, from the presentation uh, later today. Um, have an excellent evening and uh, we'll be in touch. In touch. Remember to visit Tan Grande Jugando. <laughs> yeah, in the in the email we send out, we'll we'll include links to uh, to Sandra's site, so you can uh, you can all visit and become mega fans of Tan Grande Jugando. <laughs> Diego Montenegro, greetings to Kawa. He's a fan of Kawa, of course. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, who is Kawa? Well, Kawa is an otter that it is like the Mickey Mouse of San Grande Juganda. <laughs> uh, but in this moment, I have here my other Mickey Mouse, which is, <laughs> oh, bien, déjate. <laughs> which is Nairobi, but no, if I, I, uh, 
but she's all over me and she doesn't want me to be part of the, this video conference anymore. <laughs> okay, so well, uh, thank you everyone and uh, have an excellent evening. Thank you for joining us today. Take care.